right? Please vote. I waited about for a whole hour for you to come back. If you didn't mind leaving me like that, you might at least consider leaving John. Is she here with you? No, my place was nearer than this, and she was very tired. But I have to get some tea. But we couldn't tell whether you'd be here or what had become of you. Mr. Devon, at last, you'll forgive this incursion, Miss Dunbar, when you're here. They've been telegraphing you all over London. In despair, they set me on your track. Who did? What's that? Oh, there was the devil to pay at that field last night. The liberal chap tore down from London and took over your meeting. Nothing about it in the Sunday papers that I saw. Wait till you see the press tomorrow morning. There was a great rally and they gave a big read a rousing speech. What about? Abolition of the upper house. They've been on about that for decades. Yes, but this new man's got a way of putting things. The people went mad. The liberal platform, as defined at that field, is going to make a big difference. I think so. Well, your agent says as much. Tremendous effect of last night's liberal manifesto ought to be counteracted in tomorrow's papers. You see, Mr. Kingsley, it is a battle cry we want. Drop, drop. Well, they say we have nothing to offer but personal popularity. No practical reform. No, no pandering to the masses, I suppose. Oh, well, in these democratic times. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me bursting in like this. But I can see you realize the gravity. This is if you were going to be a mere private member. Everybody knows you'll be in the cabinet. In the liberal cabinet? Nobody thought so up to last night. Why, even your brother. <laughs> But I'm afraid I'm seeing a vicious. Why not, my brother? I met Lord Windlesham and said, rush down to Carlton. Well? I told him that that field news. He said? He said it only confirmed his fears. He said that, did he? Yes, defeat is inevitable, he thinks, unless, unless you can manufacture some political dynamite in the next few hours. Those were his words. You're very tired. No, no. I'm much obliged to you for everything you've done. I'll see what I can do. If you wish to wire, I'll take it. If you don't understand, my young friend, moves of this kind must not be rushed at by responsible politicians. I must have time for consideration. All right. Well, I just hope nobody jumps into the bridge before you. I'll tell you what. I'll go and find out what time the papers go to press on Sunday morning. Goodbye, Mr. Kingsley. I'll get the pub in case I can be of any use. I shall have anything more to say. Even with our party, as your brother said, heading straight for a vast electoral disaster? If I decide on a counter blast, I shall simply telegram headquarters. Goodbye. Well, good goodbye? <laughs> Little dynamite, eh? After all, women are much more conservative than men, especially in women the property qualifications to bring in. You see now why I've encouraged you to take an interest in public affairs. Because people like us don't go screaming about it, doesn't mean some of us we don't some of us see what's on the horizon. However little they want to, women of our class must come into line. All the best things in this world, everything, civilization is one, will be in danger if, when the time comes, the only women with practical political training are those of the lower classes. Those of the lower classes and those innocuous are the socialist virus. There. Quite enough dynamite in that. Rather too much, isn't that little girl? Jeffrey, I know her story. Whose story? Miss Leverings. Whose? Vita Leverings. Why did you deserve her? I... Why did you do it? What has she been saying to you? Someone else told me part of it. And the way you looked when you saw her in Hans Ellis. Miss Levering saying that you'd know her, and then your little devil, you doing the curious name on her handkerchief. Well, I pieced it together. Your ingenuity is undeniable. And then what she was saying at the meeting about the, the dark hour, and I looked at your face, it flashed over me. Why did you desert her? I didn't desert her. Oh. I'm glad. I'm so glad. She went away from you then. You don't expect me to. She any... went away from you? Yes! that because you wouldn't marry her? I couldn't marry her, and she knew it. Did you want to? I thought I did then. It's, it's a long time ago. And why couldn't you? Why are you catechizing me? It's a matter that concerns another woman. If you're saying it doesn't concern me, Jeffrey, you're saying that you don't concern me. 
In those days, I was absolutely dependent on my father. Well, you must have been 30, Jeff. What? Thereabouts. And everybody says you're so clever. Well, everybody's mistaken. It must have been very hard for you both. Not to have the freedom that even the lowest seem to have. Freedom? To marry the woman they choose. She didn't break off her relations because I couldn't marry her. Why was it then? You're too young to discuss such a story. I don't understand if she was. Very well, then. The truth is, if you will have it, it didn't seem to bother her as much as it does you that I wasn't able to marry her. How were you so sure of that? Because she didn't so much as mention it when she wrote to break her. Right like that. Why do we go on talking what's so long over and ended? What reason did she give? If your curiosity has got the upper hand, then why don't you go ask her? You're afraid to tell me. In those days, I still hope to get my father's consent. She blames me because if the child had lived, it would have been impossible for me to overlook it. You wanted it overlooked? I don't understand. Of course you don't understand. If you did, you wouldn't be the beautiful, innocent child that you are. I'm glad you didn't mean to desert her, Jeff. It wasn't your fault at all. Only some misunderstanding that can be cleared up. Cleared up? Yes, cleared up. You weren't thinking this miserable old affair I just got is forgotten. Forgotten? No. Not forgotten, but you're torturing me so I don't know what I'm saying. You aren't gee. You aren't gonna let this come between you and me. I can't make or unmake what's past. But I'm glad at least that you didn't mean to desert her in her trouble. You might have that first of all, won't you? Why should I remind anybody of what I only want to forget? You don't mean she's... Yes, I, I left her to get a little rest. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, don't go before you hear me. I don't know if what I think matters to you now, but I hope it does. What is it that you are asking of me? To make amends, Jeffrey. You aren't thinking that I would go back to something in a few hours that, what, ten years ago was forgotten forever? What, it starts there in madness? No, what you did ten years ago, that was madness. This is Paying a debt. Look here, Kate. You're dreadfully excited in Rotterdam. Tired too. No, not tired. Though I've traveled so far today. I know you smile at some conversions. You think they're hysterical, worse, vulgar. But people must get their revelations how they can. And Jeffrey, if I can't make you see this one of mine, I shall know your love could never mean strength to me. Only weak. And I shall be afraid. So afraid, I'll never dare to give you the chance of making me loathe you. I shall never see you again. She's made good use of her time. What's changed her? Has she been seeing visions too? What do you mean? Why is she intriguing to get hold of a man that ten years ago she gladly refused to see? Intriguing to get hold of? She's a mention to you. Then how can you be sure that she wants what you ask? There can't be any doubt of that. <gasps> You ridiculous, absurd child! Then all this is your own unaided invention! Look here, do you seriously ask me to give up the girl that I love? To go off and to marry a woman that you didn't think of? You cared for her once. You'll care for her again. She is, is beautiful, brilliant, everything. I've heard you can get any man if she said herself. She bewitched you. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, you aren't going away like that. This, this isn't the end. I suppose even if she refused me, you'd... She did once. She didn't refuse to marry you. Let him be a friend to win. 
not sure I understand you. However unpropitious you may be, I shall discharge my error. I have come to make what I believe are called amends. Do you mean you've come to realize after all these years that you owe me something? I am not here to deny it. Pay then. Pay. You exact it? I will. Ah, if I insist, you'll make it all good. But don't you realize you must pay me in kind? What do you mean? Give me what you took from me, my old faith. Give me that. Ah, you mean to speak in phrases. Or give me back mere kindness or tolerance, even. You don't need your tolerance. Give me back the power to look kindly on my brothers and not as mockers and thieves. I have not mocked you, and I have asked you. Something you knew I should refuse. I can only offer you such reparations as in my power. If you don't accept it. Accept it? No. Go away and live in debt. Pay and pay and find yourself still in debt for something you can never give back to me. And when you die, say to yourself, I pay all creditors with one. I'm rather tired of all this talk of debt. If I hear you persist in it, I shall have to. What? No, I shall take your resolution. What resolution? I came here to talk of the future, not to reopen the past. The future and the past are one. You talk as if this old madness were mine alone. It is the woman's way. My conscience is clear. I know, and so do you, that most men in my position wouldn't have troubled themselves. I gave myself endless trouble. You mean you found out all these years living you discharged every obligation? Not only that, I stood by you with fidelity that was nothing short of quixotic. If women like you must recall the past, I insist on you recalling it correctly. You mean they don't recall it correctly? Not when you make other people believe that I deserted you. Curious enough, Charles, considering you did the deserting. Since you had to write the story up, you might have had the decency to tell the facts. You think the facts would have excused you? Do you deny that you returned my letters and opened them? Do you deny that you refused to see me, and that while I persisted, you vanished? I don't deny any of those things. What? I had no choice of you for years. I suppose not. Very well, then. What could be done? Nothing. It was too late to do anything. It wasn't too late. You know, since you read the papers, that my father died later that year. There was no longer any barrier between us. Oh, yes, there was a barrier. Of your own invention, then. I had my guilty share in it. But the barrier was your invention. There's no invention. If you had ever known my father... Oh, well, the echoes. How often you used to say, if I knew your father. But you said to. You called that barrier by another name. What? The child that was to come. That was before my father died, while I still hoped to get his consent. How the thought of that all-powerful person that used to terrorize me. What chance had a little unborn child against the last of the great feudal lords, as you called him? You know that child who stood between you and me. I know that child did stand between you certainly made it clear you had no love left for me. I need all of it for the child. You don't mean to say that it lived? No. I mean that it was sacrificed. But it showed me that no barrier is so impassable as the one a little child can raise. Was that why? Was that why? Day and night, there it was. Between my thought of you and me. When I was at my most unhappy, I would wake in the night thinking I heard a cry. It was my own crying I heard, but, but I seemed to have it in my arms. I suppose I was mad. I would wake in that lonely old farmhouse and pretend to hush it. It was so that I hushed myself. I knew. I didn't blame you. You couldn't risk me. You agreed to both such things. Yes, you had to be very discreet. You were so well known, your autocratic father, your brilliant political future. Be fair. Our future, as I saw it then. Yes, in all of a concealment. It must have looked quite simple to you. You had no idea of how a little child who had never seen the light of day, something you meant to sweep aside and forget. Something you had swept aside and forgotten. You had no idea that something so small have the power to push you out of the world. But it can do more. It can push that girl out. It can do more still. Are you threatening me? No, I'm preparing you. For what? For the work that must be done, either with your help or that girl's. I see. Price, well? <laughs> Even if I could trust you with it, no. It would be a 
poor bargain to give her up for anything you could do. Despite your assumption, she may not be your tool. You're dreadfully afraid she is. But you're wrong. It is not just I who got hold of Miss Jean Dunbar. How else could that inexperienced young girl have felt the new loyalty and responded as she did? She sees we've come to a time when we find there's a value in women apart from the value men see in them. You teach us not to look to you for the things we need most. Well, if women are to be freed by women, we have need of such as who knows? She may be the next Joan of Arc. That she should be the sacrifice. You teach us to look very calmly on the sacrifice of women. Men tell us in every tongue it's a necessary evil. One girl's happiness against something nobler than the happiness of thousands. Who can hesitate? Not Jean. I do. I see you'd much rather punish me and see her revel in a morbid self-sacrifice. You think I need to punish you? Because like most men, you don't take the trouble to understand what we do want and how determined we are to get it. You can't kill this new spirit among women. And you can't make a greater mistake than to think it finds a home only in the exceptional or the unhappy. It's strange, Jeffrey, to see a man like you as deluded as the Hyde Park loafers who say to Miss Ernestine Blunt, who hurt your feelings? Why can't you see that this is a thing that runs deeper than personal experience? And yet, if you take the narrowest personal view, a great deal depends upon you and I decide in the next five minutes. You recommend me realizing the larger issues, but in your ambition to attach that girl to the chariot fields of progress, you quite ignore the fact that people fitter for such work. The men you look to enlist in the end are ready and waiting to give the thing a chance. Men are ready. What men? Women have themselves to blame that the matter has become so delicate that responsible people shrink for the moment from being implicated in it. Without quoting anyone, I might add that this new antagonism seems to have blinded you to the small fact that I, for one, am not an opponent. The phrase has a familiar ring. We've heard it from 420 others. I spoke, if I may, of someone who would count. Someone who could pull his party along with him or risk a seat in the cabinet. Do you mean you're ready to do that? An hour ago I was. <laughs> An hour ago. Exactly! You don't understand men. They can be led. They can't be driven. Ten minutes before you came in, I was ready to throw my political law in with this reform. And now? And now you block my hand by attempt at coercion. By forcing my hand, you give my adherents an air of bargain driving for personal end. <coughs> exactly the mistake the ignorant agitators of your unions make. This new antagonism will not cause the movement to go forward. It will only hold it back. There are men in Parliament today that would have been actively serving the reform. So actively, so fast, the constitutional change would have required. Done it because... because it would have put a premium on the breaches of decent behavior. Look here.
this work to you? Why do you think it's only you these 10 years have taught something to you? Why not give even a man credit for learning something of life and for being sorry? Profoundly sorry for the pain his instructions have caused others. You seem to have think I've taken this all very lightly. That's not fair. All my life, ever since you left, the thought of you has been nothing but hurt. I would give anything to know you were happy again. Happiness. Why shouldn't you find it still? You're one of these people the years have given more to, not taken away from. You're more than ever.